Welcome to ASVAB Tutoring. In this lesson, we will be covering fractions. Over the course of this video, we will be going over fraction addition, fraction subtraction, fraction multiplication, fraction division, mixed numbers to improper fractions, improper fractions to mixed numbers, and simplifying fractions. Let's move on to adding fractions. In this example, we must add one-third plus one-half. When we have two fractions that have two different denominators, we have to make them into the same denominator in order to add them up. So in order to do that, we must find the least common multiple of the two denominators. So when we multiply three times a number, we must get the same number as when we multiply two times a number. So in this case, the common multiple of 3 and 2 happens to be 6. So we have to make both of the denominators of these two fractions into 6. So when we have 1 third, we can actually multiply the, both the numerator and the denominator by 2. And so when we do that, we get 2 sixths. And then for 1 half, if we want the denominator to be 6, we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 3. And then our fraction turns out to be 3 sixths. And now we have two equivalent fractions with the same denominators that we can add up. So 2 sixths plus 3 sixths ends up giving us 5 sixths. So it turns out that 1 half plus 1 third is 5 sixths. Now it's time for a practice problem. For this problem, please pause the video and try this on your own and see if you can get the same answer as I did. Let's learn how to turn mixed numbers into improper fractions. In this example, we are to turn 7 and 1 half into an improper fraction. When we have a mixed number that we're wanting in improper fraction form, we must take the denominator and multiply it with the whole number and then add that product to our numerator. So let's do this together. In this case, our denominator is two and we multiply it with our whole number. So two times seven, which gives us 14. And we take that product and we add that to our numerator. So our numerator is one. So we take 14 and we add one to it to get 15. And so 15 becomes the numerator of our improper fraction. And the denominator for our improper fraction is the same as the denominator that we have in our fraction for the mixed number. So our final answer ends up being 15 halves. So 15 over two. In this next example, we are being told to convert 9 and 3 fifths into an improper fraction. So in order to do this, we'll take our denominator once again and multiply it with the whole number. And whatever product we get, we'll add that to our numerator, which is 3. So our denominator in this case is 5. And we multiply that by 9, which is our whole number, to get 45. And we take that product and we add our numerator to it, which happens to be 3. So 45 plus 3 gives us 48. And 48 in our newly formed improper fraction is the numerator. And the denominator of our improper fraction always is the same as the mixed number. So our denominator will be 5. So our final answer ends up being 48 fifths or 48 over 5. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this example, please pause the video and see if you can do it on your own in a notebook and see if you can get the same answer as I did. For this next practice problem, once again, pause the video and do it on your own to see if you can get the correct answer. Let's learn how to turn improper fractions into mixed numbers. When we have an improper fraction where our numerator is greater than our denominator and we wanted to turn it into a mixed number, we do simple division and we take the remainder that we have and make that into the numerator of our fraction part. So let's do this together. So we have 29 and we're going to divide that by 5. 
And so two, which is the first number of our dividend, is two less. So we have to take 29 and consider that instead. So the closest we can get to 29 is by multiplying five times five to get us 25. And we subtract the two to get four. So four is our remainder. So our whole number is the five that we got in our quotient. Our numerator of our fraction part becomes four and the denominator is the same exact denominator as the one in the improper fraction, and it always will be. So our denominator for our fraction part is five. And so our final answer ends up being five and four fifths. In this next example, we are being told to convert 79 eighths into a mixed number. Again, we'll do simple division and whatever remainder that we get out of that division problem, that will become the numerator of our fraction part. So let's get started. So when we divide 79 by eight, we can start by looking at the seven, which is the first digit of our dividend, and realize that it's too small. So there's no number that we can multiply by eight to get close to seven. So we'll look at 79 instead. So the first and the second digit of the dividend together. So we know that eight times nine gets us 72, which is right about the closest that we can get to 79 without getting far beyond it. So when we do that and we subtract the two numbers, we end up getting seven. And so seven is our remainder. And so nine in our quotient becomes our whole part. The seven in our remainder actually becomes the numerator of our fraction part and the denominator is the same as the denominator of our improper fraction. So our final mixed number ends up being nine and seven eighths. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause the video and see if you can do it on your own and get the same answer as I did. For this next practice problem, please once again pause your video and do it on your own to see if you can get the correct answer. Let's learn how to simplify fractions. In this example, we have 20 over 30 or 20 thirtieths. When we have a fraction that we want to simplify, we must find a number that we can both divide the numerator by and the denominator by. So in this case, we have 20 as our numerator and 30 as our denominator. I know that 20 and 30 have 10 in common and they're both divisible by 10. So I'll divide both the numerator, which is 20 by 10, and the denominator by 10. So when we do that, we divide 20 divided by 10 to get two as our numerator and 30 divided by 10 to get three as our denominator. So our new simplified fraction ends up being two thirds. And there's no way that we can simplify this any further because two and three are prime numbers. And so they are not divisible by any other number. In this next example, we are being told to simplify 18 twentieths. So we have to find a number that can both be divided by 18 and 20. So because 18 and 20 are both even numbers, we know that these two numbers are both divisible by two. So let's divide the numerator and the denominator by two. So we'll divide 18 by two and we'll divide 20 by two as well. So then, our newly simplified fraction actually ends up being 18 divided by two, which is nine for our numerator, and 20 divided by two, which is 10 for our denominator. So our final simplified fraction ends up being nine tenths. So there's no other way we can simplify this further because 10 and nine are not divisible by the same number. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause the video and see if you can get the same answer as I did. For this next problem, please once again pause the video and try to do it on your own and see if you can get the correct answer. Let's learn how to add up mixed numbers. In this example, we are being told to add 9 and 1 half plus 4 and 1 thirds. In order to do this, we must turn both of these 
mixed numbers into improper fractions and then add them up and then see if we can turn it back into a mixed number. So let's take 9 and 1 half. In order to turn this into an improper fraction, we multiply the denominator and the whole number, and then whatever we get, we add it to the numerator. So 2 times 9 gives us 18, and then 18 plus 1 gives us 19 as our numerator, and then our denominator stays the same, so it's a 2. So our new improper fraction ends up being 19 halves, or 19 over 2. Now we take 4 and 1 third, and turn it into an improper fraction. So we multiply 3 times 4 to get 12, and 12 plus 1 to get 13. So our numerator is 13, and our denominator stays the same. So it's a 3. So our next fraction, improper fraction, is 13 thirds, or 13 over 3. Now we have to add these two together, but we have a problem. So 19 over 2 and 13 over 3 have two different denominators. So we have to turn them into the same one. So we can do that by finding the least common multiple. So we know that in this case, 2 and 3, they have 6 in common because 6 is both divisible by 2 and 3. So we can multiply both the top and bottom by a certain number to get a fraction that has the denominator of 6. So let's take 19 halves, and we can multiply both the top and bottom by 3 to get 57 over 6. And then we can take... 13 over 3 and multiply both the top and the bottom by 2 to get 26 over 6. And now we can add these two fractions together. So 57 over 6 plus 26 over 6 gives us 83 over 6. And so that's our improper fraction, which is the answer. However, we have to turn this into an mixed number because whenever we have an improper fraction the way to simplify it is to turn it into a mixed number so again we'll do long division so we take 83 and what we can do is divide that by 6 and so we have 8 so we know that 6 times 1 gets as close as to 8 so we subtract the 2 to get 2 and then we bring down the remaining 3 and we know that 6 times 3 actually gets us closest to 23 because 6 times 3 gets us to 18. And we subtract the two numbers to get a, um, a remainder of 5. And so our remainder is 5. So our whole number for our newly found mixed number is 13. And the remainder, which is 5, becomes the numerator of our fraction part. And the denominator is, of course, 6. So our final answer ends up being 13 and 5 sixths. Now it's time for a practice problem. For this problem, please pause the video and try to do it on your own and see if you can get the same answer as I did. Let's learn how to subtract mixed numbers and fractions. So in this example, we have 9 and 1 fifths minus 4 and 1 half. So in order to do this correctly, we must turn both of these mixed numbers into improper fractions and then subtract them and see if we can further simplify. So our first fraction or mixed number, which that we have is 9 and 1 fifths. And if you want to turn it into an improper fraction, we will multiply the denominator by our whole number and then add that to our numerator. So we have 5 times 9 to give us 45, and 45 plus 1 to give us 46. So that's our numerator, and our denominator rem remains the same. So our improper fraction ends up being 46 fifths. For our next mixed number, we have 4 and 1 half, and so we do the same thing. We multiply 2 times 4 to get 8, and 8 plus 1 to get 9. So our numerator ends up being 9, and our denominator stays the same, so it becomes a 2. So our newly formed improper fraction is 9 halves. And so the problem is, we can't add these two improper fractions together because their denominators are the same. This one has a 5, and this one has a 2. And so we have to find a least common multiple. And in that case, in the case of 5 and 2, the least common multiple happens to be 10 because 10 is both divisible by 5 and 2. So in order to do that, we'll take 46 
over 5 and multiply the top and the bottom by 2. And so when we do that, we get 92 over 10. And then for our 9 halves that we have here, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 5 to get a fraction with the denominator of 10. So the top becomes a 45 and the bottom becomes a 10. So we have 45 tenths. And so now we can add these two improper fractions together. So when we add up 92 over 10 to 45 over 10, we end up getting 137 over 10. And so now because this is an improper fraction since our numerator is greater than our denominator, we must turn this into a mixed number. So we had to turn it back into a mixed number. So we'll do long division and then work our way from there. So we divide 137 by 10. And so we see that the first digit of our dividend, 137, is far too less than 10. So there's no number we can multiply by 10 to get close to 1. So we'll look at 13 instead, the second and the first digit combined. So we'll look at 13. And we know that 10 times 1 gets us 10, and that's the closest we can get to 13 without going far beyond it, and we subtract to get 3. And so now, because 3 is far less than 10, we actually bring down the 7, and so now we have 37. And we know that 10 times 3 gets us 30, and that's the closest we can get to 37, so we subtract the 2 to get 7. So our remainder for this entire problem is 7. And so for our quotient gives us the whole number, so we have 13 as our whole number, and then our remainder, as we can see here, is 7. So the numerator of our fraction part of the mixed number is 7, and the denominator remains a 10. So our final mixed number actually ends up being 13 and 7 tenths. Let's learn how to subtract fractions. So in this example, we are being told to subtract 9 minus 3 and 3 fifths. So we have a problem here because we have a whole number and a mixed number. So we have to turn our whole number into a fraction and our mixed number into an improper fraction. So let's do that. So we know that 9, because it's a whole number, always has a 1 underneath it. So our fraction will be 9 over 1. And so now we go on to the 3 and 3 fifths and we have to turn it into an improper fraction. And to do that, we multiply our denominator by the whole number and then add that to the numerator. So we already know that our denominator will be five. And so to get our numerator, we'll do that. So we multiply five times three to get 15 and 15 plus three to get 18. And so our numerator becomes 18. So now we have these two fractions. We have nine over one and 18 over five or 18 fifths. And so we can't add these up because of the fact that the denominators of the two fractions are different. So we have to make them the same by finding the common multiple. And the common multiple of 1 and 5 is 5 because we can just multiply 1 times 5 to get that denominator. And so we don't have to do anything to our 18 fifths. We only have to change our 9 over 1. So when we try to turn that into a different denominator of 5, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 5. And so our new fraction actually ends up being 45 fifths. And so now we have these two fractions. We have 45 fifths and 18 fifths. And all we have to do now is subtract these two together. So we have 45 fifths minus 18 fifths. And that actually ends up giving us 27 fifths. And now we have our answer here, but the problem is, th is that this is an improper fraction because our denominator is less than our numerator. And so we have to turn this into a mixed number. So we resort to, again, long division. So let's divide 27 by 5. And we know that the closest we can get to 27 is by multiplying 5 times 5 to get 25. And we subtract the 2 to get 2. And so we have a remainder of 2. So our whole number ends up being 5, which is in the quotient right here. And then for our fraction part, our numerator is our remainder. So the remainder is 2. And then the denominator is the same as our divisor, which is 5. So our new mixed number as the answer is 
5 and 2 fifths. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause the video and try it on your own to see if you can get the same answer as I did. For this next practice problem, please once again pause the video and try it on your own and see if you can get the correct answer. Let's learn how to multiply fractions. When we have two fractions that we want to multiply together, we must multiply both the numerators together and the denominators together. So in this case, we have 3 fifths times 1 half. And in order to do this correctly, we must multiply both the two numerators and the two denominators together. So our product will end up being, for our numerator, 3 times 1, which gives us 3. And then for our denominator, 5 times 2, which gives us 10. So our new product in the fraction is 3 tenths. This next example here, we have 3 and 1 fifth times 35. And so we have a mixed number and a whole number that we must multiply together. And so in order to do this correctly, what we must do is turn 3 and 1 fifths, which is our mixed number, into an improper fraction, and our whole number, 35, into a fraction. So let's start with 3 and 1 fifths and turn it into an improper fraction. So we do that by getting our numerator by multiplying 5 times 3 to get 15 and 15 plus 1 to get 16 and our denominator becomes 5 as well because it stays the same. So our new improper fraction is 16 fifths. And we know that 35 as a whole number always has a 1 underneath it. So it's 35 over 1. And now we have these two fractions and when it comes to multiplication we don't really have to worry about the denominator being the same. So all we will do is multiply 16 fifths times 35 over 1. And when we multiply 16 times 35, which is our numerator, we will get 560. And then our denominator, which will be 5 times 1 to get us 5. And so now all we have to do is figure this out because this is an improper fraction. We have a numerator that is greater than our denominator. So we will work this through by using long division. So let's divide 560 by 5. And so when we do that, we have 5 times 1, which gives us 5. So we subtract the two numbers to get 0. We bring down the 6, which is the next digit of our dividend. And so we know that the closest we can get to 6 is by multiplying 5 by 1 again. And we get 5. And we subtract the 2 to get 1. And then we bring down that last 0 from our dividend to get 10. And we know that 5 times 2 gives us 10. And so 10 minus 10 gives us 0. So our remainder is 0. So it turns out that our final answer actually just ends up being a whole number. So our final answer ends up being 112. And there is no fraction involved because our remainder is 0. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this practice problem, please pause the video and see if you can do it on your own and get the same answer as I did. For this next practice problem, please once again pause your video and try to do it on your own and then try to see if you can get the correct answer. Now let's move on to dividing fractions. When dividing fractions, we must follow a rule called keep, change, and flip. And so in order to do this correctly, we must keep our first fraction the way it is, and then change our sign from division to multiplication, and then flip the numerator and the denominator of our second fraction. So let's do this example together. We are being told to divide 1 fifth by 1 half. And so let's do keep change flip. So we keep the first fraction as it is, and then we change our symbol. So our division symbol turns into a multiplication symbol, and then we flip the second fraction. So our numerator is now 2, and our denominator is 1. 
And so we flipped this second fraction. And now all we do is multiply these two fractions together. And so we multiply 1 times 2 to get 2 as our numerator, and then 5 times 1 to get 5 as our denominator. So our final answer ends up being 2 fifths when we divide 1 fifth by 1 half. In this next example here, we are being told to divide 8 and 1 fourth by 1 fourth. And so we're dealing with a mixed number and a fraction. And so in order to start our process of keep change flip, we have to turn our mixed number into an improper fraction. So let's do that. We have 8 and 1 fourth. And in order to turn this into an improper fraction, we do the same thing as we always do with mixed numbers. We multiply the denominator by our whole number and then add that to our numerator. So 4 times 8 gets us 32, and then 32 plus 1 gets us 33. So our numerator is 33. And our denominator stays the same as the mixed number, so our new improper fraction is 33 over 4, or 33 fourths. And now we can substitute that in for 8 and 1 fourth. So... So our new equation actually becomes 33 fourths divided by 1 fourth. And now we can start keep change flip. So this basically equals to the fact that we keep our first fraction or first improper fraction. So it stays 33 fourths. Then we change our division symbol to a multiplication symbol. So we put down a multiplication symbol and then we flip our second fraction. So our numerator now becomes a 4 and our denominator is now a 1. So for our second fraction we have 4 over 1 instead. And so now we can simply multiply these two together. So when we multiply the numerator 33 times 4 we get 132 and then we multiply the two denominators to get 4 times 1 which gives us 4. And so now we have 132 over 4 or 132 fourths. And so now we see that this is a improper fraction because our numerator is greater than our denominator. So what we have to do is turn this into a mixed number or a whole number if that's the case. So we will start with long division. So we let's divide 132 by 4. And so since our first digit of our dividend is far less than 4, we'll look at the first and the second digit together. So we're looking at 13. And we know that uh, 4 times 3 actually gets us 12, which is the closest we can get to 13. So we subtract the 2 to get 1. And then we bring down the remaining 2 in our dividend. And so this 1 becomes a 12. And so, of course, we know that 4 times 3, once again, gets us exactly 12. So 12 minus 12 gets a 0. And so because our remainder is 0, I know that our final answer will just be a whole number. So our final answer actually ends up being 33. Now it's time for some practice problems. For this problem, please pause your video and see if you can do it on your own and get the correct answer. For this last practice problem, please once again pause this video and try to do it on your own in a notebook, and then see if you can get the same answer as I did.